Hey, Tim Curley here with your Friday FAQ. This week we're talking about escrow holdbacks. So this is a question that comes up quite often. So I want to try to give you some information that hopefully will help you. So first of all, let me just say in this video, what we're talking about, we're not talking about escrow repairs that are outside of the appraisal or that are not required for the loan process. Let's say you have a situation where the HVAC is working okay, it's just old, the appraiser didn't say anything about it, but the buyer and the seller have agreed that the seller maybe is going to provide some funds for a new HVAC system at closing and they're going to pay a contractor. That's not what we're talking about here in an escrow holdback. That, of course, would just go on the seller CD. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the loan or anything like that. What we are talking about here is a situation for something that the appraiser, let's say, has called for that has to be fixed and maybe the seller doesn't want to fix it before closing, or maybe the seller doesn't have the means to fix it before closing and the funds to do the repairs are going to come out of the seller's proceeds. Okay. So let me say, first of all, not all lenders will do or will allow escrow holdbacks. You know, um, when I talk about guidelines, usually the yeah, guidelines are pretty uniform across all lenders because they come from, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or whatever the agency is. In this case, however, you will find some variation and there are a bunch of lenders that will not allow escrow holdbacks. They're going to require the stuff to be fixed before closing. So be aware of that. If you find that this is going to be an issue and it needs to be addressed, <clears throat> go to the lender right away and see if they'll allow escrow holdbacks. So for our purposes here at Atlantic Bay, I wanted to just kind of give you an idea of some of the stuff you can do an escrow holdback for and some of the stuff you cannot do an escrow holdback for. So first of all, it, as a general kind of an umbrella statement, you can not or we will not allow escrow holdbacks for any items that are needed to bring the property to the minimum property requirements, which involves the safety and the soundness of the property. So the stuff that we will allow escrow holdbacks for are generally more cosmetic in nature in nature. So let me run down a list of some examples of stuff that we would allow an escrow holdback for. Peeling or chipping paint uh, for any homes that are built after 1978, if you're talking about, you know, one of the government programs, missing or damaged handrails for non-essential areas like a basement, built-in appliances, cabinets, flooring that is not on a wood surface like concrete, rotten wood, um, except for joists and beams, HVAC, small plumbing leaks, broken windows, carpet, hardwood floors, septic systems, as long as the system is functional and it only needs some minor repairs, connection to public water, drywall, roof, cosmetic repairs other than what we've talked about already, uh, landscaping, sod, and termite damage as long as it's not structural. So this is not a comprehensive list, but again, this gives you some examples of things you can do an escrow holdback for. Now, one thing to note here as well is that Generally, depending on what the item is, the or at least in our case, we're going to require, in some cases, a holdback of more than what the stated cost is, just in case there are cost overruns. Just to give you an example, uh, carpet, uh, we're going to require an escrow holdback for 110% of whatever the, the uh, bid amount is or the estimate is. So just be aware of that. You know, septic system, 150%. Drywall, 110%. Talk to your lender about that. So a few things that you cannot do an escrow holdback for. These things are going to have to be fixed. Like if this is called for on the appraisal to keep the or get the get the property to minimum property up to that minimum property property requirement line, these are things that would have to be fixed before closing. Anything that has to do with the foundation, water damage to walls, roof beyond expected life of two years or you know, more, th more than three layers of roofing, decks that are not built to code, additions and or basement finishing that weren't properly built, termite treatment, moisture remediation, um, and anything that has to do with a bond loan like NC Housing. If you're doing that program, escrow holdbacks are not allowed, so be aware of that as well. And if it's a situation where, like they can't, they can't use, um, uh, bids or invoices from like a big box store, like a Lowe's or Home Depot. So I hope this information is helpful to you and gives you some clarity around escrow holdbacks. A lot of agents I talked with are surprised 
that this stuff is allowed. But, you know, as a general rule, <clears throat> if it's something that is cosmetic in nature and doesn't have to do with the structure or the, or the soundness of the home, it can be allowed depending on the lender you're working with. If you have specific questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Thank you.